Hey, welcome everyone. This is the first video of the channel, the plane propeller ceiling fan, and this is how I made it. Yeah, it actually came with some strange color paint on it. Um, I think they call it shabby chic in this country. So I just used an angle grinder with a flapper disc just to rip it off as quick as possible. Um, I know it's not the professional way to do it, but it works right. Um, then I used a fine grip buffer just to take it down to a nice smoother finish. Yeah, blowing the excess dust off to uh, brush on a nice light coat of wood stain um, with a double helping towards the centre just to give it a gradual darkening from the middle out. Yeah, after I started making it, I saw a really cool image online of a similar looking propeller with the old uh, RAF colors on the tips. Um, so I decided to do something similar as I think it'll really help it stand out on the ceiling. I was actually given this propeller by my other half for Christmas. Um, yeah, she's a good egg, that one. She thought it might be nice for me to hang it on the wall in the man cave, but uh, oh no, no, I knew as soon as I seen it, I was uh, calculating and working out how to make it spin on the ceiling. You know, it's the obvious thing to do, right? Right, the propeller's done, now onto the engineering part. I bought this ceiling fan from Amazon for around uh, 70 quid. It's nothing special, but I'm gonna use the motor hub and the remote control system out of it. Doing a quick sketch here to work out how to put all the parts above the ceiling. Um, the idea being is you will only see the propeller inside the room. I think this will look so cool as no one would tell it was motorized until it was switched on. Okay, so I've just collected all the parts and materials I'll need here to make the top unit. Um, I'll start by cutting all the steel frame parts to length. I'm using an angle grinder with a slitting disc because um, my little chop saw was out of action at the time. Okay, and onto the miller machine. I'm using a um, 60mm flat bar for the main base of the unit. Um, everything will be measured and built off this, as this will be the part that is bolted to the wooden joists above the ceiling. Yeah, these are the holes for the screws to secure it to the wooden joists. Um, I actually lost the exact measurements of the centres at the time, but um, I remember it being around 600mm, so I'm just drilling some extra holes either side, uh, just to give us a bit of leeway, just in case it wasn't right. Okay, I'm just making this into the drive hub, which the um, propeller will be bolted to. Um, I'm using an old offcut here of a um, 12mm thick steel plate. First I'm drilling the centre hole for the shaft to push into, it's, um, it's around 22mm, uh, then I'll weld it up, stick it in the lathe, face it off um, and then turn down the square edges into the hub for the propeller. Quickly trimming off the edges here just to make it a little bit quicker and a little bit easier to turn this down once I put it onto the lathe. I'm using some 25mm steel round stock to make the shaft for the hub. First I'll turn down this end to around 20mm for the two bearings to fit over. This has to be a nice sliding fit, nothing too tight. Okay, uh, now I have the right fit for the bearings. Um, I'm just using a strip of emery cloth here just to clean the rest of the shaft up. Um, then I'll part it off to the right length, um, spin it round, and then turn the other end down, uh, which will then fit into the hole of the hub plate I had just previously made. 
and I want a nice snug fit here so um, I know when I push it into the plate they are pretty much going to be square with each other. Then, um, then I'll weld it up and bring it back to the lathe and machine the hub to the right diameter. Okay, so it's not bad, it's, uh, it's running reasonably true. But um, I'll just give it a quick skim on the face just to make sure it's smack on so the propeller runs um, and spins flush to the ceiling. Now I'll turn down the diameter to around five inches to the same size as the center of the propeller. Okay, so I've just marked out and center popped six equally spaced hole centers. Uh, these are then drilled and tapped to M8 um, for the bolts to hold the propeller on. Okay, so now that's done, uh, I'm back onto the lathe to make the boss for the bearings. I'm just using a piece of uh, steel round stock here, which I'm boring out by using standard drill bits. Uh, stepping up the sizes one at a time. Then I'll use the boring bar then for the final few cuts. Okay, just taking my time here to get a nice sliding fit for the top bearing um, because if it was too tight it would compress the outer ring into the balls um, resulting in extra friction that we just can't afford with the uh, 70 watt motor that we're using. Okay, onto the propeller nose hub here using um, a piece of six inch aluminium round stock. Uh, this turned out to be one of my favorite parts of the build. Um, there's nothing like turning a large piece of aluminium on the lathe. You can take really big cuts almost as fast as you like. Um, so I'm just ripping it off here into shape. God, it's so satisfying. Okay, I revved up the lathe here as fast as it'll go around 2000 RPM. Uh, I'm using a cotton polishing wheel with some wax on it and the pneumatic grinder just to polish it up. This is a really neat trick as it'll polish aluminium into an almost mirror finish. And slowed it back down and uh, just using a parting tool with some juice just to cut it off. Um, yeah, this is looking really good. Okay, so I've just turned it round and uh, holding it in the vise with a rag. Try not to mark the lovely finish. Um, and same as earlier, just drilling out the six clearance holes for the bolts. Yeah, I got a bit excited here. I couldn't wait any longer. I just had to give it a little bench test. Um, bolting the propeller into the stub shaft and uh, yeah, so let's give it a spin. The 
because the motor is only uh, 60 or 70 watts, I'm just removing the rubber seals from the two bearings because even these rubber seals will uh, add additional friction and resistance that we just can't afford and will likely give the motor a real hard time and will probably fail in the future. So uh, I think it's really worth doing and looking back I probably should have cleaned all the grease out as well. Okay, uh, not much of the build left now. Uh, just going to weld up all the steel work at the frame uh, and then finish with a quick lick of paint. Okay, well done a little stub onto the motor. Uh, once fitted it will hang down in line with the hub shaft. Then I'll connect them both together with a simple coupling I made out of braided hose, which is held either end with some Jubilee clips. This will probably reduce any misalignment between them and hopefully reduce any noise or vibration. Okay, at last, let's put it all together. I'll connect up the remote control system and then give it a little bench test again before I install it into the man cave. So, uh, okay, here we go. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for now, but don't forget to watch the next video coming very soon where I install it into the ceiling of the man cave. So, thanks for watching. And remember, I have many other videos to come with a wide range of ideas and inventions, so please consider subscribing. And if you liked the video, please hit the like button. Ciao for now.